Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Truth Piri. I am a pastor in Forward in Faith Ministries currently in Belize, right here in Central America. We thank God for what he is doing. I want to acknowledge the apostle and servant of God together with the maid servant, Dr. Yuna, uh, uh, who are our tutors, our mentors, and we are so privileged to be under your tutelage and we thank God for what he has done through you. Exactly eight years, the men of God uh, came to this land of Belize, not knowing anyone, without no contact person, no, nothing. But he just had a voice to go to a country called Belize. And he came to this nation, began to preach the word of God uh, from scratch, going on the street, winning people to God. And now we are seeing the fruits of his obedience to his God. And we thank God for what he's doing in our land. Uh, we now have four assemblies that are functioning well. Uh, this can only be the doing of this God. And we thank God for what he's doing, the souls that are coming, the souls that have come, and those that will come. And we have a strong pastoral team. Uh, we thank God so much. Thank you, uh, Apostle Guti and Mom, for your sacrifice and for your obedience to the Holy Spirit. And we are following your footsteps. Uh, I want to thank the Lord so much that... Um, this opportunity that I've been granted to share with you the word of God. We are going to take our reading from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 4, uh, verse 19 and 20. Uh, the Bible says in verse 19, But I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and will know not the speech of them uh, which are puffed up, but the power. Verse 20 says, For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. I will come again. But I will come to you shortly, if the Lord wills, and will, will know not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. The kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you, Lord God, for your presence as we are delivering your word. We thank you for your word, for it is anointed. Your word is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. We pray, Father God, that you anoint my lips as I deliver your oracles to, the, to your people. Sanctify my lips, anoint our ears that we may hear and comprehend your word. We thank you, Father. Take over right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, before I get into the sharing, before I get into the teaching of the day, I want to give a short testimony of what God has done and what God did in my life personally and the life of my family. Uh, my mother and father um, were married and they struggled for oh, seven years not having a child. They tried everything they could, but nothing was working out. They went to doctors, they went to false prophets, they went to spiritualists, and uh, nothing was happening because they had been uh, diagnosed with, uh, with a very serious condition whereby uh, the sh my mother was found that she did not have a womb. Now, being uh, having a cyst in your ovaries, will give you a little hope that in, you know, a surgery can be done and this can be done. But with my mother, it was a situation where she was told that she had no womb. So there was no hope of her having a child. The doctors had told her that she would never have a child. Everybody had told her that she would never have a child. But she heard about the gospel of Jesus Christ that I am going to preach this wonderful day. And when she heard about this kingdom, she said, let me go and give a try. And when they went, the man of God, Dr. Goody, was preaching the word of God. And they asked him a, a simple question and said, what do you want God to do for you? And they said, we have no children. And the man of God laid hands on my mother and said, in the name of Jesus, let your womb be open. Now, my mom coming from the extreme end where she had tried everything and nothing worked out. And now she's hearing a man of God saying, let your womb be open. It was kind of disturbing for her because she had been told she had no womb. And the man of God is saying, I let your womb be open. I want to address this to you that God does not see your situation the way you see it. Because when 
people were seeing no womb. God was seeing something great that was going to come out of a wombless woman. And a uh, 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 few months down the line, she began to notice that something was happening in her body. And she realized that she was, she was pregnant. And, you know, uh, God gave her four children, three boys and one girl. And now when the doctors were seeing no womb, when the false prophets were prophesying and saying, there is nothing like this going to happen. God was seeing a woman without a womb giving birth to four children and one of the children will be preaching to you right now. So I don't know what you're going through, but if God can bring a child out of a dead womb, if God can bring a child out of a woman without a womb, your situation is not too big for God. And I want to say as we share the word of God, believe with all your heart and God is going to do a miracle uh, in your life. Uh, the word of God from where we have read, we see Apostle Paul, uh, he had planted the seed. He had preached Jesus Christ undiluted. But you know, wherever the preaching of the gospel was done in those days, there were people that used intellectual knowledge. There were people that would come and plant doubt. There were those who were of the law. There were those who were using uh, uh, intellectual capabilities to try and counter what Apostle Paul had done. And when he writes now, he said to them, I will come shortly if the Lord will and will not. Not the speech of them that are puffed up because they are those that are puffed up because they use intellectual knowledge. They use what they have read. They use what they know. It's, it's one thing to know about something and it's another thing to know something. And this is why I will entitle this message, Walking in Kingdom Revelation. Walking in Kingdom Revelation. So in this scripture, we see that there were a bunch of people that were using intellectual knowledge to try and uh, 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 fight what Apostle Paul was, 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 was giving to the people. And he says, when I come to you, I am not coming with the same speech that you have heard from those that are puffed up. I'm not coming with the same way of speaking that you have heard from those that are intellect, that those who believe in intellectual capability, but I am coming to you with revelation. I am coming to you under the power of God. And he says now on verse 20 that for the kingdom of God is not in word. Now I want us to understand that the word that he's speaking about there is not the word of God because many people would say, oh, it's not all about just the word of God. The word of God is everything. But the word that he was speaking about there is just uh, intellectual bubbling. It's just uh, uh, a speech that, that those people who were intellectually uh, uh, involved would just come and speak things to confuse people. So he's not talking about the word of God there, but he's talking about the bubbling that was coming from those that were, were of the law. So he says, for the kingdom of God is not in your eloquence and how you speak. It's not in bringing terminologies that confuse people, but the word, the kingdom of God, it is in the power of God. So now we are going to go in the scripture and we have to understand that the general definition of a kingdom uh, a kingdom simply speaks of a state, a land, a country, or a place which is governed by a king. So when we speak about a kingdom, in general terms, we speak of a state, a country, a land, or a place that is under the governance of a king. So now there has been so much emphasis on the kingdom and there has been less emphasis on the one that makes the kingdom. So what makes a state or a country, a kingdom is not the place itself, but its governance by the king. So it is the king that makes the kingdom a kingdom. So there has been much emphasis on the kingdom to an extent that some people think that the kingdom is something that you pick up on Sunday and drop off after church. It's something that you pick up when you're fasting and drop off when you, when you break the fast. But the kingdom of God, what makes the kingdom, the significance of the kingdom is the king that overrides that kingdom. The kingdom is under the rulership of a king. So if the kingdom that we are preaching about, the kingdom of God, is under the the king of kings who is Jesus Christ. We need to understand that this kingdom was spoken about. And for us to understand this kingdom, we have to know where God took man. When God created Adam, he gave him dominion over everything. He put everything under his subject. He took, put everything under
under his authority. And he gave them the power to dominate the earth. He dominated uh, the fish of the sea, the birds of the air. All that was given. But when the devil came and he saw that man had been empowered, man was deceived. And the fall of man means that he lost fellowship with God. He lost a relationship with, 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 with God. And we, we see right there, when if we read the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 15, we see God beginning to give the first promise uh, uh, about the coming of this king that I'm going to be speaking about. And as he is speaking to Adam and Eve and the snake, he speaks to, to you know, he is speaking and he says, and I will put enmity between your seed and her seed. He's speaking to the snake. As though he's still, still speaking to the literal snake, he is now speaking to the ancient serpent, the devil to say, I will put enmity between you, the snake, the ancient serpent, and her seed. And right there, we see the first promise of the coming king, because biologically, we know that the seed comes from the man, the woman does not carry the seed. Women are incubators of the seed. So when God says her seed, he is referring to a child that will be born without the involvement of a man. He is already speaking about the coming of the king of the kingdom that I'm going to be preaching about. So we see the Lord promising in the Old Testament, we would see Jesus coming here and there, but he was coming in a shadow. And we have to understand that when the prophets came, they were speaking the things of the kingdom of God, but they did not understand what they were talking about. They did not understand what they were speaking about. So before we go back to the scripture that we've just read, I am going to run through some of the scriptures where we see our king being mentioned in the Old Testament because this will help us to walk in the revelation of the kingdom that we are in. I have seen people that were given money, but they did not know how to access the money. So the kingdom has been given. The kingdom is right here. But failure to walk in the revelation, the lack of revelation of the kingdom that you are operating in, will limit the amount of power that you are to receive in the kingdom that you are in. Now, let me pause a little bit. Now, for us to understand that the kingdom is not just a place where you go, but a kingdom, it is the residence of the king of that kingdom. Now, let me give this example. If uh, 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 a king or the queen visits another country, maybe in Africa, where there are no good roads, maybe in that area there is no electricity, the conditions are not favorable in that location. But when the king visits that area, you're going to see that electricity will be created in that area. Roads that were buried, they, 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 they will start be, you know, looking good because why? There is a king coming in the area. Though the king has left his kingdom to go to another kingdom that is poor, the moment that king steps in that area, the, the status of that area changes not because of the place but because of the king that has walked in that area. So which means revelation of the king of the kingdom makes you enjoy the power that lies in that kingdom. Failure to have the revelation of the king is failure to enjoy the benefits of the kingdom of God. So we want to see some of the guys in the Old Testament who saw this king and they were able to embrace the power and the benefits of that king that we are speaking about today. Now if we look uh, in the book of Psalm, chapter 22, from verse 1, we see David giving a prophetic utterance. I, I wouldn't want to call this just a prophecy about what Jesus would say, but he actually said the words of Jesus Christ through the Spirit of Christ. And he opens verse 1 by saying, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And these are words that the king would say when, when he would come into this kingdom. And he would say why hang, while hanging on the cross. So David says, my Lord, my Lord, why have you forsaken me? That's Psalm chapter 22 from verse 1. If we are to read verse 6, David says, for I am a worm and not a man. And you look at David, he was a man of war. A worm is defenseless. A worm is humble. A worm can be stepped on. You know, you put it on the ground, the people will step on it. So looking at the behavior and the characteristics of David, the, he is nowhere near the worm. He was a man of war. He was a man who would attack those who attacked 
loved him. He was a man who knew how to defend his territories. So there has to be something that he was talking about. So I was reading and I understood that there were different types of worms and there are different types of worms, but the worm that David was speaking about there had a significance to the king of kings that we are talking about here. There was this worm that is called Tolat in, in Hebrew, and this worm had, a spe had special characteristics. I, I, you know, this worm, whenever it, 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 it was its time to reproduce, it would go and stick its body on a wood. And when it sticks its body on a wood and lays its eggs, and when the eggs hatch, the little worms would start eating from the body of the mother. So they would start feeding from the body of the mother, eating the flesh of the mother, and even drinking whatever is coming from the mother. And so now it would not move from that wood until the little ones are able to stand on their own. So you have to understand that it is Jesus Christ who gave up his body for us to have the freedom that we have. So when David was saying, I am a worm and not a man, the worm that he was speaking about, it has a significance of the Christ, the king of the kingdom that we are preaching about. So when he said, I am a worm, that was Christ, the spirit of Christ speaking through David. One of the characteristics that really struck me about this worm is that just before it dies, when its body is torn, it produces a red, red pigment that would then color its little ones and give them a new identity that fit these little ones to look like their mother. So it is the death of Jesus Christ that introduced us to an atmosphere and an identity that we never had before. So David is speaking. If you were to continue to read, you understand that he goes on to say, they pierced my hands and my feet. David never had his hands pierced. He was speaking about Jesus Christ, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when we go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, Isaiah also introduces us to another uh, 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 um, a New Testament era, though he lived before Christ was manifested in the flesh. We need to understand now, Isaiah comes, if you read the book of Isaiah, he comes and he gives us the description of the Lord Jesus Christ. Isaiah chapter 53, you read, you know, verse 2, the Bible says, uh, he had no beauty or majesty that we should be attracted to him. So he begins to explain to us how the king would look like. He begins to give us the physical appearance of, of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then he goes on to say now on, on, on verse 5, he says he was uh, pierced for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. What is Isaiah doing? He is looking at the coming of the king and as he sees the coming of the king by faith, he does not say by his stripes, we, they shall be healed, but he goes into that world and he says by his stripes, we are healed. Now I am saying if Isaiah had the, uh, the guts to say by the stripes of Jesus who was not yet born, we are healed. How much more with you, the New Testament believer? So we are saying your revelation of Jesus Christ, understanding who he is determines how you are going to enjoy the kingdom of God, how you are going to enjoy the power of the kingdom of God. Now to run the long story short, Jesus Christ now came to the earth. And when he came to the earth, he did so many miracles. He opened their blind eyes. He raised the dead. He walked on the water. We need to understand that if Jesus he had been killed by Herod at the age of one day old. His blood would still have saved us. His blood would still have healed us. His blood would still have cleansed us because it was the same blood that he had when he hung on that cross. But he came to the earth and he had to prove his power by healing the sick. He had to prove his power by multiplying bread. He had to prove his power. He had to give us the guideline of how we should live in the kingdom. So the life of Christ gives us the manual of how to operate in the kingdom but then his death gives us the access into that kingdom he showed us how to do when you are broke when you don't have money he told that he showed us how to live when there is no money in your pocket when he said to peter go to the river the first fish that you will catch open his mouth and you will f what was he doing he was showing us the lifestyle of the kingdom but we could not have access into that lifestyle until the son of god had to hang on that cross because it is his hanging 
king on the cross, that is the master key into the mysteries of the kingdom of God. So the mysteries of the kingdom of God, the password into the mystery was the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he came on this earth. He walked on the water. He raised you know, Lazarus from the dead. He raised Jairus' daughter from the dead. He, he, he did so many miracles. Those that had their children dead, he raised them up. Those that were sick, he healed them. Those that had leprosy, he touched them and he healed them. Even those that were blind, he gave them eyes. Uh, he, wa he, wa he was showing us and demonstrating us the kingdom of God. But that was not enough because showing us only is not enough. We had to enter in the dimension of the kingdom. And what gives us entrance into that kingdom is when the Son of Man <laughs> hang on that, on that cross. It would give us access into his kingdom. So he walked, he came, he proved his power by performing miracles. But he had to prove his love by dying on the cross. And we need to understand that scripture had to be fulfilled. He had to fulfill the scripture. Yes, he had walked on the earth. Yes, he had shown them love. Yes, he had pointed to us, this is the kingdom of God. This is what we do when the boat is gone and you still have to catch up with the disciples. There is another way as a kingdom child of catching up with the disciples. You jump on the waves and you start to walk on the water. Yes, it's going to mess up the kind of mind, but I'm showing you how the kingdom that I live in, how the kingdom that I came to give you, how it operates. Now when there is no food and people need to eat, let me show my children how to operate when there is no enough food in the house. So he blessed the food and the food multiplied and fed all those people. Why? He was showing us the kingdom. But Lord, showing us alone is not enough. You, you, he had to give us the password. He had, you know, it's like somebody who is, oh, if I leave my laptop, I leave my phone with you and I don't give you the password to that phone, you are limited to a certain extent because you, you might brag about it. You might say, oh, this is iPhone 12. You might say, oh, this, is, this phone is so special, but you are not going to have access to the camera. You are not going to have access to the emails unless I give you the password into my phone then you won't access my files so his death his lifestyle was just showing us that this is what I do but his death opened the door for us to enter in the kingdom of God his death gave us access into the mysteries of the kingdom of God now we need to understand one thing when he came to this earth he also wanted to prove to us that he were able to live as a child of God and live with Without, with, with, without a sin. Now, Jesus Christ walked on this earth. He did so many miracles. He was praised. At one time, they would provoke him to say certain things. And he was a man of wisdom. And we also need to understand one thing that, you know, when we speak about this king that I am talking about, we have to, we, we have to understand because there are some, some certain people that believe that the birth of Jesus Christ was the beginning of Jesus Christ. That was not the beginning of Jesus Christ. He existed before the beginning began. Again, what I call Genesis 0 verse 0, what was happening before creation came into existence. Now, when the Bible says in the book of Genesis 1 verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That was the creation of the heaven and the earth, but that was not the creation of our king. Our king existed before existence came into existence. So we need to understand now, that's why I love the writing of John, the son of Zebedee, who says in the book of John chapter 1 from verse 1, he introduces us to the Genesis 0 verse verse 0, the activities that were happening before Genesis 1 verse 1. And John came by the Spirit of the Lord and he said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So what Genesis did not tell us, because Genesis starts by telling us the creation event, the creation of the heaven and the earth, but that's not the beginning of our Lord. The beginning of our, the, you know, but that's the beginning of creation, but not the beginning of our Lord. So he existed before existence. He existed before the earth was created. He existed before the heavens were created. So John came and he clarified this to us and he says, in the beginning, let me tell you what was happening before creation. There was the word and the word was with God and that word was God. God. So he is not just baby Jesus, son of Mary. Yes, he had to manifest in the flesh because as God, we were not going to be able to know him. So he had to become flesh. He had to become human so that you and I could be able to know him and see him because
because as God, we were not going to be able to look at him. We we're not going to be able to see him. So he came in the form of man and he was sitting in Mary's womb waiting for the manifestation so that his people will be able to see him. But as God, he had all the power. So he was 100% God and 100% man. Though he was walking on this earth, he was also God. As God, as man, he felt hungry just like you feel hungry. But as God, he taught us that when you are hungry and you want uh, figs from a fig tree and it doesn't give you, you have the power to curse it and it dries right away. So as man, he went through the same challenges that we go through. But as God, he always taught us that there is a, a way around. So he came. And when the time came for scriptures to be fulfilled, when the time came for Psalm 22 to be fulfilled, when the time came for, for David's prophecy, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabakatan, my Lord, my Lord, why have you forsaken me? As David had said, when the time had come, they were there in the garden with his disciples and praying right there. And suddenly a bunch of soldiers came and they were there to arrest him. From the book of John, the Bible says, he asked them, who do you want? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus say to them, I am he. And the Bible says they all fell down. Why? Because right there he was not addressing them as Jesus, the son of Mary. He was addressing them as God. Remember what God said to Moses, said to God. Moses said to God, uh, when I go there and they ask me who is the Lord, what will I say? And God said, Tell them that I am that I am has sent you. So when Jesus said to them, I am he, he was not addressing them from the human side. He was addressing them as the I am that I am. And they were not able to stand before the king of kings. They were not able to stand before the I am that I am. Okay, can I preach a little bit on that? I don't know what your situation is like. I don't know what the doctor has said to you. I don't know what your family has said to you. Maybe they told you you amount to nothing. Maybe they have told you that you'll never make it in life. Maybe they told you you would die without a husband. Maybe they told you you would die without a child just like they told my mother. But I'm here to introduce to you the king of our kingdom. Jesus, the son of the living God. The I am that I am. When he touches your life, your life will never be the same again. I'm here. I don't know where you're watching me from. Right now as I speak the word of God, the I am that I am is walking into your house. Maybe you're watching me from work. Maybe you're watching me in your lounge while you are sitting down I want to say to you your situation is not permanent the king of kings is in the house and he will touch your life so he was right there so we need to understand that Jesus Christ he was God and he was also man because if we say he was just God and not man then other religions will say then he didn't feel the pain on the cross and it wasn't a sacrifice because as God he cannot feel pain so he felt pain just like you he felt hungry just like you and and but at the same time he was God in the flesh. So he was right there and they took him. They took him. Now what I am speaking about gives you access into the things that you desire because we have put emphasis on the kingdom and making it some unidentified uh, flying object. It's like a UFO because some people uh, they try to figure out what is this kingdom because you cannot see to say this is where it is but you can see the effects of the kingdom of God. Let, 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 let me tell you this. When Dr. Goody came to Belize you know, some of the people that were there, some of them, he picked them from the streets. Some of them were dirty. Some of them were poor. But I tell you, if you see some of them today, some of them have been changed. Why? Because though I cannot touch to say the kingdom is right this, but you can see the effect of the kingdom. I was blind and now I see. I was doing this, but now I am changed. That is the power of the kingdom of God. Now for us to tap into that power, we need to understand our king. We need to understand who the king is. Uh, uh, let, let me pause a little bit. I was told a story about a man who was a rich man. He had everything. He had cars. He had luxurious cars. He had millions of dollars. He had houses. But what he lacked was fellowship. People loved him for his money. Whenever they would call him, they want money from him. Whenever they would send him a text, they want a little something from him. So he said, now that I am about to die, I want to see who, uh, 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 you know, people should come. And then, um, 
uh, my will shall be read and then my relatives will be there. So many people came on that day where his will was going to be written. He had no child. He had no wife. He had nobody. So people came and he said some of the things because there are a lot. Some of them will be auctioned and then you, you, you know, there will be an auction and people will come and bid on the auction day. And uh, now uh, the lawyer came, the, the attorney who was in charge of the will, he came and he stood there. People were there waiting to buy. Some were waiting to buy some Mercedes Benz. Some were waiting to buy that big mansion over there. Some were waiting to buy that new Lamborghini that he had just bought. And then the, the, the attorney came, the lawyer came, and he had a, 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 a paper that he had. And he said, now we are ready uh, uh, to, 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 to do the auction. But before we do the auction, he pulled out a dirty uh, picture frame that had an old picture of this man. This picture frame was full of uh, cobwebs. It was so dirty, but it carried the picture of the, of the man. So the, the, the auctioneer said, before we do anything, is there anyone who can be for this picture. Anyone who can bid uh, for the portrait of the late man that we've come here to celebrate. Nobody was willing to buy that picture. Everyone, even his own brothers, were like, what will I do with that dirty picture? I don't want to have anything to do with this man. All I want is his car. I'm waiting for the car. I'm waiting for the house. I'm waiting for this. And then a, a, a poor old man was sitting in the back. You know, he says, I will take the, the picture. It was going for about 100 US dollars. And everyone laughed and said, ha ha, this old man must be crazy. How can he bid $100 for a dirty old picture that is full of cobwebs? How can he bid for such, a, for, for, for such a useless thing? When the old man came and the papers were signed, the auctioneer said the auction is closed. All the wealth that the man worked for is being given to the man, the old man that bidded for the picture. And everyone was so shocked, like, what? We, we, we had come. We had come for, for, uh, for cars. We had come for all this. How come uh, this old picture, this man is going with all this because of this old old picture. And the, the, the lawyer came forward and he said, before the man died, he said, the person that will buy my picture proves to love me more than my wealth. So the man that will buy my picture or the person that will buy my picture deserves all the cars and houses that I worked for. So the auction is closed. Everyone came for the material things, but that one man came not for the material, but they, he came for the owner of the material. And the kingdom that we are in, it becomes powerful when you have a relationship with the king of that kingdom and when that king of that kingdom resides in your heart the power that apostle paul is talking about is not just the power way of, of having people fall down under the holy ghost that's part of it but that's the easiest part of it the power that he is speaking about there it is the power that comes through the knowledge of the king of your kingdom and when you have that revelation when you walk in the revelation of the kingdom of god no weapon formed against you shall prosper you shall shall walk on the water. You shall do what Jesus Christ did. I want to speak to somebody today. We have not come with bubbling words. We have not come with intellectual knowledge. We have not come with big words and huge terminologies. We have come to you with the kingdom of God. We have come to you with the kingdom of Jesus Christ, the king of kings. We have come to you with the word of God. Now when you read the Bible, now let, let, let me speak to kingdom people here. When you read the Bible in Luke chapter 7, seven. Uh, verse, verse 28, as you read the Bible, you will understand in Luke chapter, Luke chapter 7, Jesus says in his own words, I will paraphrase, but Jesus was saying, of every person born of the woman, there is no one greater than John. I'm pausing there. Elijah called fire from heaven. Uh, you, you talk about Jonah who stayed for, for three days and three nights in the fish. And yet Jesus comes and he says, none of them was greater than John. So John becomes greater than Elijah. John becomes greater than Jonah. John becomes greater uh, uh, than El, uh, uh, Elisha. John becomes greater than Moses. And I'm asking myself, how come John is greater than Moses? And I realize now that Moses spoke of a coming Jesus. He says, a prof God will raise a prophet like me. So Moses spoke of the, the Messiah that would come. All the prophets, David spoke of the Messiah that would come. You know, even Isaiah spoke of the Messiah that would come. But when John came into existence, he did not come to tell us of what was coming. Coming, He came as to show us what had come. So that qualified him to be greater than the prophets who told us about what was coming. And when Jesus came, John says, the Bible says, I think it's John chapter 1 verse 29. He says, behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the 
sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. So Moses says, God shall raise a prophet. Isaiah says, by his stripes we are healed. Uh, 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 David says, uh, uh, they pierced my hands and my feet and they did not know what he was talking about. But when John came into existence, he says, that which Moses spoke about, that which Elijah spoke about, that which Isaiah spoke about, I'm here to present it to you. Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. But that's not where the power of that scripture is. When you continue to read that scripture now, you will, you, you, you will understand now Jesus when he said, all those born of the woman, none of them is greater than John. Yet he says, but the least in the kingdom, the smallest in the kingdom, is greater than John. <laughs> ah, yes, we think Elijah was great. Yes, we think Moses was great. Yet Jesus came and says, none of them is greater than John. But then he goes on to say, yet the least in the kingdom, the smallest in the kingdom that you are in, is greater than John. And by being greater than John, it means we are greater than Elijah. Why? Because Elijah, uh, uh, all those prophets, they pointed us to Christ. But John, when he came, he showed that this is him that Moses was talking about. This is the Lamb of God. So it is the revelation of John to be able to tell the world that those who in the Old Testament, we, they were speaking about him figuratively. I'm here to tell you that that which David was speaking about, I have him right in front of me. This is the Lamb of God which takes away the sin of the world. So his revelation of Christ made him greater than Elijah, made him greater than Moses. When you begin to walk in revelation, when you begin to walk in the revelation of Christ, nothing shall be different difficult for you. When you begin to walk in revelation, miracles will begin to happen to you. When you begin to walk in revelation, then Jesus says, the least in the kingdom is greater than John. So you are greater than John. Why? Because John pointed, Moses told us that Jesus, the Messiah would come. John told us that the Messiah has come. Yet you in the kingdom, John did not get the opportunity to get what you got. You, John did not get the opportunity to carry Jesus in his heart. You are in the kingdom of God because the entrance of Christ in your, in your life makes you and qualifies you to be a child of God. John chapter 1 verse 12 says, as many as received him. He gave them the power to become children of God. So to be a child of God, to have Christ in your heart, John never experienced that because he died before Christ had, you know, had hanged on that cross. So you become more greater than John because John saw it and pointed it. But you didn't just point to Christ. Christ is living in you. Your life is an embassy of Christ. Your life is a kingdom. It's a, it's a domain where Christ sits on. So it means that, that spiritual husband that is bothering you, I'm giving you the revelation of Christ, the revelation of the kingdom of God. It is that revelation that will kick away every demon from your life. Walk in revelation. I like my father, Dr. Goody. One time he was going to uh, have his exercises and rain was coming. And the, the young man that was with him said, no, it's, it's going to rain. And the man of God said, no, we are in the kingdom of God. We walk in the kingdom of God. And he went for his exercises. And when it started raining, he began to speak to the rain as a kingdom citizen. And he says, rain, you go push this way while I do my exercises there. And that side was raining. And where he was, there was no rain. That is the kingdom of God. It is embedded in the revelation. The revelation of Jesus Christ brings light to your life. The revelation of the king that you are serving gives you power over cancer. I don't know what the doctors have said to you. I don't know how many days they have given you to survive. I don't know how many months you still, you, you know, they gave you to say up to this month you'll be dead but I'm here to tell you we have come with Jesus Christ the king of our kingdom we are not coming with bubbling words we ain't coming to you with stories we ain't coming with you with enticing words we are coming to you with the king of kings the lion of the tribe of Judah when he touches your life your life will never be the same again I remember at one time, my wife was sick. I prayed to God and I was so bitter with God, but God wanted to change my mentality. I said, Lord, people are coming and I'm praying for them. They're getting healed while my wife is sick. God said, no, uh, you only know one part about me. Healing is one part that you know, but I got to show you another part that you don't know. The other part of me. So I was praying. Nothing happened. She was in hospital for about a week or so. And, you know, we had no money that time. And, you know, the, the, the bill was so high. So I went to the accounts department 
to see how I could pay my bill. They checked on the computer, checked on the computer, looked at me, checked on the computer. They said, sir, we don't know this, but our computers are saying the hospital owes you money. Somebody paid and even overpaid. So they said, come after two weeks so that we can see how we can do it. I'm looking at them. I'm like, what's going on here? That's the kingdom of God. Because in the kingdom of God, with revelation of the king, you begin to live like the king. You begin to do things that the king was able to do. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So your revelation of the kingdom gives you power to exercise that kingdom. Gives you power to exercise that kingdom. Gives you power to do the things that Jesus Christ does. He gi it gives you power to walk in revelation. The revelation of the kingdom. I'm here to say to you, wherever you are watching from, revelation of the kingdom. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive that revelation. Now in that revelation, it also means you gotta change your language. Uh, let me come back home a little bit. When I came to, 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 to Belize, I, I realized that, oh, in as much as I would speak English, I realized that the people were not talking the English that I know. So I would go to the market to buy. And the moment they hear me speak, they know uh, he's a foreigner, he's a tourist. So the price would double up. I said, how come this one is buying something for a dollar and I'm buying it for about two dollars? What's going on? Because I'm coming from somewhere. So what did I do? I began to learn the, uh, the, uh, the language of the kingdom. You know, so I would go there um, in my early days. I say, how are you with this straight English? Say, ah, he's not from here. Now, I began to learn the language. I began to learn the Creole. I began to learn how the people talk. So when I, well, uh, then I would go to the market now. Well, I, I, I get there and say, ah, where they go on? Uh, what's going on here? So they look at me and oh, he's one of us. Why? The language made me look like them. The language allowed me to get the favors that the local people get. Enter in the kingdom. Yes, you have received Jesus Christ, but you need to have revelation. You need to have revelation. You need to have revelation and walk in revelation. Walk in the kingdom of God. Demonstrate the kingdom of God. Walk like a child of God. When you stand, miracles will happen. The sick shall be healed. Miracles will take place because of the kingdom of God. We come to you. Not with bubbling words. Not with intellectual capability. We are men of no words. We are men of no high education. But we have come to you with the kingdom of God. The kingdom of Jesus Christ. I remember when Dr. Goody was in Trinidad, people were telling him, even the taxi man that was driving him, told him that I cannot drive you to this area because there are people that will kill you there. There are criminals there. That, 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 they, they, they have guns to kill you. And he said, I'm, uh, I'm not afraid. I want to go there because Jesus sent me to preach to those people. That cannot happen <laughs> because even while I was in that area, they told me if your, your, your tire, your, your car jams in this area, push it because even the police are scared to come to this area because of these criminal activities. But the men of God went there, not just as a man, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. When you are walking in the kingdom of God, in the revelation of the kingdom of God, power will follow you. Power will follow you. This is the kingdom that we preach. Even in this time of the pandemic, ah, people are crying. Governments are on their knees. Powerhouse economic giants are on their knees. But I'm here to tell you, when you are down, when the economies are down, we don't speak their language. We speak the kingdom language. We speak the kingdom language. We are blessed in the city. We are blessed outside the city. Yes, the dollar might go down, but we, our dollar is embedded in the kingdom. So we have a dual citizenship. We came from heaven and we live on this earth. Now, as I round up, I want you to understand. One time I went to the U.S. Embassy while I was in Zimbabwe. And when I walked in the U.S. Embassy, I saw the U.S. flag. I saw the picture of the U.S. president. I'm saying, wait a minute. I thought that we, we are in Zimbabwe. Yes, we are in Zimbabwe. Yes, this thing is on the Zimbabwean soil. But once you enter the embassy of the U.S., you have entered the country of the United States. Now, once you walk in that land, you are walking in the United States while it's in Belize. That's what the kingdom of God is like. Yes, you are walking on this earth, but you are not of this, of this earth. You are an embassy which communicates with the country from which you came from. So where I came from, cancer is not allowed. Where I am, 
Cancer is not allowed. Where I came from, I cannot be poor. Where I am, I can also not be poor. Jesus Christ, he is the one that gave us the password into the kingdom of God. I'm here to declare to you the power of the kingdom of God. It changes the barren. It gives them children preaching to you right now. It changes the poor. It raises them from the dust. Receive that revelation. Walk in the kingdom of God. Walk in the kingdom of God. And the power of God will be seen. The healing will take place in your life. Mighty things will take place in your life. Ah, I rem I'm reminded of my wife when she went to pray with the women that she was with. And as they were praying, one lady said, my mother is lying sick. And the mother was over maybe 100 miles away from where they were praying for. But while they were praying where they were praying, the mother is not in the church. But she saw a man walking into her room. And that man said, I have come to tell you that you are healed. Get up. And the mother went back home and found her mother walking. She said, what happened to, to you? And the mother said, a man came around such and such a time and he told me you are healed. I should get up and walk. That's the king of our kingdom. When we kneel down to pray, power takes control. Receive in the name of Jesus Christ. The power of the kingdom of God is coming in your home. Cancer bows in the name of Jesus Christ. Paralysis bows in the name of Jesus Christ. Maybe you have COVID. I'm here to tell you that the king of your kingdom carries more power than COVID. Receive your healing right now. Receive that power. Receive that power in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Kalabatakataya, I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Wherever you are watching me from right now, join your faith with mine. We are doing kingdom businesses. Something is going on now. Something is coming in your room. Maybe you are watching me from a hospital bed. Yes, they have told you you have days to live. But I'm here to tell you, life is coming into that world in the name of Jesus Christ. The doctors will be surprised. Get up from that bed. Begin to walk. Maybe you're watching me sitting on a wheelchair. Maybe you're watching me dying from cancer. Arise and walk because Jesus is here. Healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive the power of the kingdom of God and you shall see mighty things happening your way. We are products of the kingdom. We are children of the kingdom. We breathe the kingdom. We dream the kingdom. We eat the kingdom. Everything about us is the kingdom of God. And we are sharing this with you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, right now, I'm just going to pray with somebody who wants to receive Jesus Christ. Lift up your, your hands. And if you want to give your life to Christ, I'm going to lead you to Jesus right now. The Bible says a person believes in his heart and is justified, confesses with his mouth and is saved. Now I want you to receive. Say after me this prayer. When you pray this prayer with all your heart, salvation will take place in your life. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe that you are the son of God. You came on the earth. You died for my sins. Lord Jesus, I open my heart today and I confess you with my mouth. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. I believe that you are the Son of God. Make me your child. Make me your child. I receive you today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. With that prayer that you have prayed, you are a child of God. In Forward in Faith, we have over 154 uh, churches in, in 154 nations, over 154 nations. So check on the street, on the screen, uh, dial those numbers that are on the screen, and we will direct you. There are people that are waiting to receive you and to pray with you, to give you hope. Life is not over until the king of the kingdom says it's over. May the Lord bless you and healing. Now I'm declaring that healing in your body. Be healed from that sickness. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Receive that healing. Receive that power. Receive that revelation. It is that revelation that will kick you out of that wheelchair. It is that revelation that will get you out of that stretcher bed in hospital. It is the revelation that will cause you to recover whatever the devil has stolen in your life. Receive the power of the kingdom in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. If you are deaf, if you are mute, you cannot speak, you cannot hear, right now your ears are opening up. Call the numbers that are on the screen because Jesus has healed you right now. I speak to you woman, I see a couple uh, that, 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 you know, divorce is already taking place because you are sleeping in, in different rooms. But I'm speaking right now, reconciliation of the kingdom of God is coming into your house and there is a reconciliation taking place. Something good is happening 
happening in your life right now. In Jesus' mighty name. May the Lord bless you. Thank you. Amen.